Hello and welcome to my very first Facebook Live for this week. This is a se- uh, first of a series of seven, seven chakras in seven days. What we're going to be doing over the next seven days is exactly this time right here on this page, Crystal Connections, is looking at each of the chakras. And what I want to do is talk to you about different crystals and different oils that can be used to help to balance all of these chakras. Now, one of the things you're going to need for each of these seven is you're going to need a pendulum. So if you have a pendulum, go for a bit of a run quickly and go grab that. I'm going to dribble rubbish about the base chakra for about a minute or so and talk about myself while you go grab your pendulum. So for those that haven't met me before, my name is Adam Barillet. I've been working with crystals for about 20 years. What I'm really passionate about is not just teaching you what crystals are good for, but by teaching you what to do with them. We're, you know, we're a special group of people that are drawn to crystals that you know, we'll spend 10, 20, 50 dollars on a colorful bit of rock when maybe our friends and family are wondering what we're spending our money on. And so if we're drawn to these crystals and we're drawn to these gifts from Mother Nature, we really need to make sure that we're actually working with them. And of course my cats are gonna try, try and steal the limelight throughout this whole series through the next few days. So hopefully you've got your pendulum. If you haven't, quickly go and grab it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna be looking at where is our base chakra today? So a lot of the time you'll hear when people talk about chakras, they say, oh, it's an open chakra or a closed chakra. Now, thinking that chakras are energy centers, when we think about energy, did you wake up the mor- this morning and your energy was open or closed? Probably not. You may have had low energy, or sometimes you have high energy, or just right energy. And so that's the same thing we want to do when measuring our chakras. Our chakras don't open and close. They ebb and flow. I kind of pretend it's like a little scale of 1 to 100, where 50 is balanced, 100 is really, really overactive, and zero would be really underactive. So grab your pendulum now, and if you haven't got a pendulum around, maybe pull a pendant off and give that a try. Now, how we use a pendulum? You want to hold it in the hand that you write with. So for most of us, that will be our right. You can either pinch it at the top, or you can drape it over two fingers. And what, you're going to, what we're going to do first is we're going to ask it the question, show me the energy of a balanced chakra. Show me the energy of a balanced chakra. Show me the energy of a balanced chakra. You don't have to say it out loud, you can just kind of say it in your mind. And after a while you'll start to get a bit of a swing. Now today I don't want you to worry about which direction or which way it's going. What we're just looking at is rate of swing. So that, whatever you get, now you may be getting that, you may be getting bigger, smaller, different directions, that's fine. But that's your 50 point. That's your balance chakra. So now what we do, we stabilise it again. And we're going to put our left hand, or our receptive hand, the hand we do not write with. Oh, let's get this nice and still. I'm going to ask it, show me the energy of my base chakra. Show me the energy of my base chakra. Show me the energy of my base chakra. As you can see with mine, give it a little while to make sure it's happy, mine is swinging less than it was with the balanced chakra. So this would suggest that my base chakra is underactive. Now if you, for the first one, got something nice and normal and now it starts doing this, You've got a bit of an overactive chakra. And if it's about the same, it's balanced. So what we're going to look at is we're going to look at some of the characteristics and different things that you can do that um, you can actually use to bring your chakra back into balance depending on where it is. Because I'm going to take you beyond the normal chakra packs where you just get one crystal of each colour. Because if you think about it, if you have an overactive base chakra, and remember we use red crystals for our base chakra, if it's overactive, like a fiery crystal, like a ruby, putting that on an overactive base chakra, it's kind of like giving a a six-year-old a Red Bull and asking him to settle down. It's really, really hard. So, let's look at an overactive base chakra. If you had an overactive base chakra, maybe give me a like or a heart and let us know and we'll have a look at that. So how do you tell if someone has an overactive base chakra? The base chakra, because this is our sense of safety and security. And so when it's overactive, we tend to feel overly safe and overly secure. So we'll be a bit reckless in our behavior. We may be a bit belligerent or a bit um, inconsiderate of others because we, we, we're invi- we kind of have that invincibility complex. And so that would be a sign that you have, or some of the symptoms of having an overactive base chakra. So what we want to do there is we want to calm that down. So there's a few different crystals that we can use for that. The first one, is a red calcite. Now calcite, if you ever feel a nice roll piece, it feels soapy. And so it's really easy to remember what calcites are good for. What do we use soap for? I, I hope you can answer that question. We use it to wash away. So red calcite for the base chakra is really good for taking away extra energy. So any of the calcites are really good for that. So you can use that. The next one 
you, you can use just a small bit of black tourmaline, like that. Now, black tourmaline, I know I said red crystals for the base chakra, but we can use some black and brown as well. And you, what you'll notice in my tourmaline here is you've got these lines that go backwards and forwards. And black helps to, when, like when we wear black and we stand in the sun or something like that, we absorb that energy and it takes it away. So it's this extra energy that'll actually help to draw it away. So you can use black tourmaline in that type of way as well. Another one that I really like to use, I'll put that black tourmaline down gently, um, is jet. Now, if you've ever held jet, you'll notice it's really light. It's actually not a real crystal. It's fossilized organic matter or trees. And so it's a lot lighter than anything else. But because its life force is so close to ours, it's really good for absorbing our own unwanted energies. So that may be anything from grief or anger or resentment or jealousy or anything like that. But also if it's placed near the base chakra, it helps absorb extra energy out of there. So today what we're going to look at is not just crystals, but we're going to look at essential oils as well. Because what I've found is essential oils can be really, really powerful when used in unison with crystals. What happens, essential oils can be up to 50 to 70 times more powerful than the plant alone. They're the concentrate of that plant. And so I really love using them. There's two different essential oils that we're going to look at today for soothing and overactive base chakra. So if you're a bit reckless, if you're a bit inconsiderate sometimes, then maybe you need the first one is cinnamon bark. I don't know if you can see that properly in the light. Sorry, the sun's setting, which is quite beautiful, but not good for cameras. So cinnamon bark, it's got that real warming kind of smell. And so what you can do is you can work with that. Uh, you can put some in a carrier oil and massage it into the base chakra to help soothe it as well. Now, another option is cassia essential oil. It smells very, very similar to cinnamon, slightly sweeter. And whereas cinnamon is really good for its more uh, for healing properties, as in physical healing. This is really good, you could actually use this cassia for cooking. Now, I'm not sure if you recognize the bottles that I'm using, but I'm using doTERRA essential oils. The biggest essential oil company in the world that grows their oils in the country pretty much all the time where the plant is native. And energetically, and chemically, and everything that comes out of that makes it a far superior oil. And so I really, really like to work with these, and we're gonna talk about some special offers and how you can get these to work with these later on as well. Um, the other thing I love about doTERRA, lots of charity work. So, combining, so you don't need to have all those crystals that we just talked about, either having a red calcite, or you can use even a honey calcite, a brown calcite as well, will work okay. Or a black tourmaline, or a jet. These are what, choose one of these four crystals for an overactive base chakra. Or, or and in combination, either a cassia or a cinnamon, and that will help to calm it down, stop that recklessness and be a bit more safe and secure. Now, what I want to also teach you tonight is because I know there's some healers out there or maybe you want to learn to do your own healing and I am going to be offering, stay tuned later in the week, probably Wednesday or Thursday, I'm going to offer a big online training course on teaching nature healing using crystals, animal guides, essential oils, angels, mermaids, unicorns, you bet it. I'm going to cram it all in and I'm going to teach you all that. But I want to give you some little sneak peeks about what we're going to have in that. And we're going to teach some healing grids. So. If you have an overactive base chakra or you're working with someone who has an overactive base chakra and you want to start to soothe that down, you want to start to you know, bring that back into balance, what we're going to do is we're going to get a bit of red calcite. Now, you know, that's obviously a really, really big piece. Whatever's going to be a decent to sit on there. And we want to sit that. Now, you, you may comfortably be able to put it between your own legs, but if you've got a client, you might want to flip them over and get them to lay on the back and just kind of putting it on their bum is pretty much where you go. So we're going to put that in the centre. And then we're gonna get four black tourmalines like this, or maybe we'll get some small ones, might be a bit easier for gritting. And we're gonna put them like that, and like that, around the base chakra, around the red calcite sitting in the middle. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. When, we do the, when I do the online course, we're gonna have diagrams so you can see exactly what they all look like. Now, so they, what do you think they're, they're helping to do? We've got extra energy in there, so the red calcite's able to clear that out, and the black tourmaline is also drawing that out as well. To help us also get a bit more grounded and connected to the earth, we're gonna use our jet and we're gonna put one piece of jet or two pieces of jet either at the feet or in between the feet there. And that's a really nice kind of layout, a really simple but effective one for taking extra energy out of the base chakra. So, who here has an underactive base chakra? If you did your pendulum and you had an underactive one, maybe give us a thumbs up and let us know right now. So what do we do then? How do we know when we've got an underactive base chakra? Well, because this chakra is about feeling safe and secure and able to adapt in this changing world, if you struggle with that, if you don't feel safe, then you may have a bit of an underactive base chakra. 
Now, you know, sometimes you can see this presents a lot as people get older and the world gets a bit more fast paced and you can't keep up. Maybe you've got some parents, you know, they still have that passbook and they still take that to the bank and get the little lines printed out and they don't want any of these ATM machines, it's all a bit too scary and that type of thing. Or maybe, you know, you're the person at work or you know someone at work who can't adapt to change and what they do is, you know, when there's a new policy, they're like, oh no, we can't change at all, I've always had my lunch break at 12 o'clock, I couldn't go at 1 o'clock now. They don't like that. Another really interesting um, sign that someone has an underactive base chakra is that I don't feel secure unless I have a certain amount of money in the bank. This is a really good sign for showing you that security doesn't come from money because you can be a millionaire and still be shot in the street. Um, you know, it doesn't bring that, but it's that kind of, I, I need to get a certain set of things and then I'll feel safe. And people surround themselves in this false sense of security and safety. And so if you hear people say, oh, I need to make sure I've got 50,000 in the bank or I'm not safe, that would suggest as well that they've got security issues with their base chakra and maybe that needs some firing up. So how are we going to fire that up? Of course, being live at the moment, of course, and thank you very much for tuning in. If you have any questions, I'd love to put them in the comment section and I'll answer them as they pop up as, as I see them come up. So four or five, actually I've got lots of different crystals for firing up the base chakra. There's really good ones. Let's start with a powerful one and I told, mentioned it before, a ruby. So this is a raw ruby. This is what look, what they look like when they're raw. They're big chunky kind of ones like that. Now this is going to be really good because it's got that real fire energy so it helps to put more energy into the base chakra. Now that one's a bit of an expensive one. You, can, you, you know if you've got an underactive base chakra it doesn't mean you have to go down to Zamel's or Mads Kelly's or somewhere and get someone to buy you a ruby ring or you buy your own. You can get them quite cheap. This here is a tumbled ruby. It sells for about $20 and if you stay tuned after the live in the comment section and also in the, uh, the Crystal Connections event talking about the seven chakras in seven days I'm actually going to be, have these for sale for $20. So you can get your ruby and you can start firing up that base chakra a little bit more. Ruby is really, really good in that way. Now, quartzes are really good for adding energy into things because they grow in points. So anything grows in point, if I'm pointing at you, what am I doing? I'm sending energy to you. So, red quartz. This is one called ruby aura quartz. Now you may have seen aqua aura quartz before. And what they, how do you make aura quartz is you get plain or clear quartz and you actually put it in a heated vacuum with different metals. So aqua aura is created when you fuse just pure 24 karat gold with quartz. You may be able to see, if I lean up a little bit, this one here. This is my angel aura quartz that I've been wearing recently. And this is silver and platinum. If you put gold and silver together, you get this beautiful ruby aura quartz. And this is really good because it's got that point and it's got that fire and it actually sends energy into that chakra. Really, really powerful in that way. So a great one for a, um, for an overactive, um, for, sorry, for an underactive base chakra. Um, James just asked, is red jasper okay? Red jasper I'm gonna talk about in a little while. So probably not for an underactive, um, because jaspers can be a little bit calming, but I'll get to jasper. Good question, Jane, stay tuned. That's one way to keep you watching. Um, now, another one that I love, another red crystal, where have I put it? Da -da 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 -da. So many red crystals. Might not look too spectacular there. The sun's up the set and it's going to be a bit dull. Maybe this one looks a bit more spectacular. Cinnabar. C-I-N-N-A-B-A-R. Now, cinnabar is actually really, really toxic. This is mercury sulfide. So, if you've got a raw piece, don't lick it. Um, but, you know, polished pieces are probably better to work with um, in some different types of ways. It's mercury sulfide. And what happens with crystals that are toxic, just like they create a reaction in the body, and, and, and you know, your body would react and there'd be energy moving. Energetically, they also help to bring more energy in as well. I often call this the magician stone. It helps you to summon energy from that core base of yourself and put that into your will. And if you want to find out more about that, check out my YouTube video on Cinnabar. But this is really, really good for the base chakra for giving it a bit more energy. Now, a crystal that's becoming more and more popular um, and getting more and more attention is one called Shungite. Now, Shungite, is this kind of, it looks kind of silvery, it's like a just chunk of metal, but it's a, it's a complex form of copper, and it's actually been found to contain antioxidants and different things like that. Now, there's a really great book you can read, and it's called Shungite. It's by an author called Regina Martino, I believe off the top of my head that she was a French scientist, and she did lots of different experiments on Shungite, and found Shungite to be really, really powerful in helping to uh, 
boost or to stimulate an underactive base chakra. So this is gonna be a really nice one to have. Now, where did I put him to the I've got all these crystals everywhere, all hiding from him. Obsidian, when you think of obsidians, where do obsidians come? They come from volcanoes, that energy brewing up and it comes out and it's got that fiery energy. So you get one called mahogany obsidian. And this is a combination of red and black, so you've got those real base chakra colors in there. This is gonna be another one to help fire up the base chakra in that way. So you can use any of these, any of these crystals, and that's why I like to give you lots of crystals, because if I just said, oh, you have to have a ruby to fix your base chakra when it's underactive, then what you'd probably go is, oh, I can't find a ruby. Um, so that's why I'm giving you different options. Now, when it comes to essential oils, my favorite essential oil to use for an underactive base chakra is cardamom. That real warming kind of spicy kind of brings that warmth. It's a real warming kind of oil. And it's lovely to really have in your, when you're doing your base chakra, to have a bit of cardamom. So what you might do is you might really simplistically, you choose one of the underactive base chakra crystals that we are just talking about, the ruby, the ruby or a quartz, the cinnabar, the shungite or the mahogany obsidian. Put this in a bit of carrier oil, like a fractionated coconut oil, and massage that into the point. And they're gonna work really well synergistically together to get an amazing result in that way. Now, what kind of healing grid can we do if you've got an underactive base chakra? What we wanna do is we wanna fire that up. So, what I want you to do is I want you to find, and remember you can just use small tumbled stones, I'm just a show off. So you get a for the center, what we're gonna put straight on the base chakra at the back of our spine or the base of our spine is a mahogany obsidian and a ruby and put them next to each other. Now, around the outside of that, we wanna start bringing energy in. So remember the black tourmalines before in the last grid, we we're taking them out, we wanna take them in. So we can either use clear quartz, you can either use your ruby aura quartz in points or, where do I put my little other one? Oh, here we go. Smoky quartz points and all of these are going to put more energy into that chakra and be a really nice way So we're going to surround them in there. We're then going to get some brown tourmaline I know it looks a bit black in here, but trust me it's brown if I could shine some lights through it You'd see it's definitely a brown one and what we're going to do is because when we're feeling you know Unsafe unsecure ungrounded. That's all signs of an underactive base chakra What we want to do is we want to enhance our connection with the earth and brown tourmaline is really good for that. So we've got our, our ruby and mahogany obsidian in the middle, our four crystals putting more energy into that center, but we're also gonna have the brown tourmaline on our thighs, one on each thigh, and that's gonna help us actually feel a bit more connected to the earth and to fire us up and put a bit more through the energy system and through our hands and that type of thing. I recommend holding two bits of cinnabar in each hand. Now some of the crystals I'm talking about are obviously a little bit, um, hard to find, so just adapt. Use whatever you can and improvise until you can get all, all the ones in your collection. And they'll come when the time is right. Okay, so that's what happens if you've got an overactive or an underactive base chakra. So what do we do if we've got a balanced chakra? How, how does it look when we've got a balanced base chakra? Well, basically what happens is you feel safe and secure, you're able to adapt to the changing world, and you feel that you can provide for yourself, you know, that you don't struggle with food or shelter, all those core basics. This chakra is to do with our primal animalistic drives. What do I need to survive? Not do I, not do I want what's pleasurable. We start looking at that as we move up the chakras throughout the week. But this is about our core desires to feel safe, secure, and survive. And so what we're gonna do when it's balanced, we definitely have all that. So if you do have a balanced base chakra, do you need to use crystals? Do you need to use oils? Well, the way I answer that question is when you're feeling well, do you take supplements? Do you look after your health or do you wait till you're sick until, you're, um, until you start worrying about what you should be doing? And hopefully the answer is actually yes. While you're well, you look after yourself. So we're gonna use crystals and oils for that as well. Now, tourmaline, as I said before, as we know, we get tourmaline in our in our black tourmaline, that's very, very common, but you can actually get rain tourmaline in what other colors. In fact, you can get it in every color of the rainbow. Reds, oranges, yellows, greens, pinks, purples, everything. There's a beautiful myth that said before the gods put tourmaline into the earth, they pass it through a rainbow, and that's why you get the different colors. This is red tourmaline, one of the rarer tourmalines to get, but this is a really good one. Because of the lines of tourmaline, 
what happens is it kind of ebbs and flows the energy in the coloured ones. And so it's really good for just keeping that balance going backwards and forwards. So red tourmaline is a really nice one. And sometimes you can find little tumbled stones of it. It's not, not as hard as you think to find. You've just got to look. And that's a really good one. Another one that's really, really good as well is a really rare stone. But hey, it's good to give all those experienced crystal watchers out there and crystal lovers something to search for. Where have I popped it in my little pile? It's called Bix Bite. B-I-X-B-I-T-E. This is a real dragon stone. It's got a real dragon energy to it. And it's quite rare, but so are finding dragons. So this can really help you connect with your dragon guides in a great way. So Bix Bite is going to be a really nice one also to keep you balanced. Um, when you've got a balanced base shark and you want to keep it that way. It really helps to empower it a bit more. Now the essential oil that works really well with a balanced base chakra, and what I like to do is you can actually use essential oils to test how your chakras are going. So we used a pendulum before, but with any of these base chakra oils, what I say is get one of any of them, have a smell, and if you love it, like, oh my God, can I drink it out of the bottle, or hate it, why did they put that in a bottle? That would suggest that there's an imbalance to do with that energy system, and that's to do with your base chakra. Because no essential oil is toxic, and so you're not going to have... Why, why are you reacting to that? It's got to be something higher than just a physical reaction. And so what happens is, vetiver is really, really good. It's really nice and calming. If you, if you don't like lavender or lavender doesn't cut it when you're trying to get to sleep, then vetiver can be a really nice one. Rubbing it on your feet, rubbing it on the back of your neck so it goes into your central nervous system can both be really good ways to work with vetiver and feel more grounded and really get that earthy, strengthy feel. So I find when people are unbalanced in their base chakra, ew, yuck, it smells like dirt. And when people do like it, they're like, oh, it smells like the earth. It's heavenly in that type of way. And so vetiver can be a really good one for keeping their base chakra balanced and also really, really um, giving you an indication of where your base chakra is at. So if you're a reader or if you do any tests like that, you can use these oils to actually check whereabouts someone's um, base chakra is. Stay tuned because near the end I'm actually going to give you a blend of different oils which I find to be really really quite powerful and when you put these three in these different levels together sometimes you like the smell sometimes you don't and I find when you like it you're balanced and when you don't you're unbalanced. Simple as that. So let me give you a really powerful um, healing grid or meditation or spiritual movement grid if your base chakra is balanced because if we're there we don't just keep it there let's kind of grow it and evolve it as well. So in the middle, what we're going to use is we're going to use a crystal called Darwinite. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of Moldavite before, that beautiful green crystal that was formed from a meteorite that crashed in the Czech Republic. So what I'm holding in my hands there is half dirt from, um, from the Czech Republic and the other half is stardust fused together. You may have also heard of Libyan Desert Glass. This is formed when um, a meteor crashed in the Libyan Desert, and so desert sand and stardust. And did you know that Australia has its own tektite or its own moldavite and it's called Darwinite? Can anyone guess where it's from? That's right, Tasmania. Mount Darwin is where it actually landed. Now, I, I've actually got my piece working and doing something else at the moment. I didn't want to interrupt it in what it's doing. So it's actually a chocolate brown colour. It can look quite black, but if you shine light through it, it'll look quite chocolate brown. Really powerful um, connecting to Mother Earth and deepening that... Um, connectivity with that spiritual consciousness of our planet. Really nice for that. So what we're going to do is we're going to put that right on the base chakra. Now around that, we're going to either surround that with four red tourmalines if you can find it, four clear quartzes, or four smoky quartzes, depending on what you can, and you can mix it up as well. Why are we using fours? Well the base chakra four obviously makes a square. That's the best square I can do. Um, and what square is all about stability. It's really hard to tip over square. So that's why we're using a lot of squares and fours with the base chakra. So after that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get red jasper. Now red jasper is the most fiery of the jaspers. Jaspers are really calming. You know, some jaspers you don't feel their full effect, such as maybe something like ocean jasper for six months. You've gotta work with it constantly for six months. Red jasper has a bit more of a Mars energy, so it is a bit more fiery. And we're gonna put that in your or the other person's projective hand. We're going to put in the receptive hand a really special crystal, a smoky Lemurian seed crystal. Now, on Crystal Connections, the crystal of the week is a Lemurian seed crystal, so you're going to learn lots about that, but this is a Lemurian, a smoky Lemurian seed crystal. We're going to put that in our receptive hand. So, red jasper in our right hand, the hand we're right with, this in our left, and we're going to hold on to that. 
We've got the Darwinite in the middle, surrounded by four smoky quartz, red tourmalines, or clear quartz, and you can mix and match them. You don't have to have them all the same. We're then gonna have some obsidian arrowheads at the feet. And we want one on the left foot, we want it pointing down, and on the right, pointing up. So just put, if that's the foot where you're laying on the table, you just put it kind of pointing at it, if that makes sense as well. And then what we want is we want some black kyanite on the heart. And we're actually gonna push it down that way. You can see, I'll give you a bit of an extreme close up. You can see all the different sprays there. And that kind of helps us send more energy down into that base chakra as well, and it's quite protective. So to go over that again, as I said, um, I'm gonna be offering a healer's course. So if you're really interested in this, what we're gonna do is you're gonna have diagrams, you're gonna really learn these and practice these and give us feedback and find what, what's really effective in that type of way. So to summarize, Darwinite in the middle on, on the base chakra, around that, four red tourmalines, clear quartz and smoky quartz pointing in to surge more energy in there. A red jasper in the hand that you write with, a smoky Lemurian seed crystal in the hand that you don't write with, Obsidian arrowheads up and down at the feet and the black kyanite on the heart with the sprays going down. This is going to blow your world. It's going to really deepen your connection with Mother Earth and really help you feel grounded and solid and stable. Um, so if you really want to work on the base chakra, and it's really, it can be really empowering to work on the base chakra, especially when we are drawn to things like crystals and oils. You know, there's a lot of focus on being all spiritual and up here with the angels and the higher realms and new dimensions and different frequencies. There's so much magic in the earth, and the more you work with your base chakra, you'll re that'll really start to be unveiled with you. So, that's my favorite real blow, blow your mind kind of base chakra um, grid. Do you like that one? Give us a thumbs up if you do. Um, now, a few other oils that you can use for the base chakra as well. Uh, 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 where have I put it? Oh, maybe I forgot to grab it, but cedarwood. Cedarwood is a really, really nice one um, for the base chakra as well. It's got that calming effect, it helps you to sleep, it helps you to feel really grounded as well. Now, each part of the... Um... Stop stealing my show, Aurora. She's trying to upstage me with her bum. Um, another... Now, each part of the, each chakra regulates a different system, and the system that our base chakra regulates is our adrenal system. It also helps with our skeletal system, but also our adrenal system. And clove essential oil is very, very protective, and very, very, um, it, it adds antioxidants, but it's really good for adrenal support. Okay, so Tanvi, if you missed the start, after I finish yakking on, this will jump back on the page and you can watch the different, and you can re-watch it from the very start. So hello from Singapore as well, Tanvi, good to see you. Um, it's not a paper grid, these are grids that we're talking about that we're actually laying on our base chakra to actually balance our base chakra a little bit more. Hopefully that answers your question. Clove is really good. Now, one amazing other one that I love to work with, this is a blend from doTERRA and it's called Balance. It's got spruce, it's got chamomile, it's got blue tansy and a couple of other ones. And this is really nice for just keeping you grounded and balanced, it's their grounding blend. Where I use this is a lot actually. Being a Gemini, I run off um, nervous energy, so I'm always running around doing a lot. And do you ever have those days where you kind of got so much on your plate that you run into the laundry and you're like, why am I here? And you run to the bedroom and you're like, you're not doing anything effectively. You're trying to do 15 things at once and not doing anything well. Balance on the feet and on the back of the neck just helps you to calm down, focus, and really kind of, um, you know, focus on more, one thing at a time. Really good for kids that are nervous for going to school, all different things like that. And stay tuned, I'm going to let you know at the end how you can actually get hold of Balance Oil. Um, and because you know me, I'm going to help you to get a member's price so you don't have to pay the full price for it. Everyone loves a discount. Now, what else can we work with apart from uh, crystals and oils? There's lots of other things. If we're working on our base chakra, we want to surround ourselves in the colour red. Eating red food, apples, raspberries, cherries, things like that. Um, Listening to music in the sea of key, in the sea of key, in the key and sea. <laughs> Can you tell that I've been up since about 2 a.m. Perth time? I've just flown in from Sydney, so I'm a little bit wacky. I promise I'll have my act together by tomorrow, the sacral chakra. Um, famous last words. Um, listening to music in the, in the key of sea, but I also really like to work with animals. And a couple of animal guides that you can call on um, in, um, when you're working with the base chakra, the first one is the rhinoceros. Solid, really focused on the ground as well. 
and you know, got that horn that kind of is focused on a point. So when we're feeling that we need grounding and we need to focus on something, then rhino can be a really good animal to call on. Now, how do we work with an animal guide? Similar to how you might work, sorry, I'm just stretching out, my legs are cramping. Um, how, um, you know, you might have, a, you might close your eyes and visualize yourself in a sanctuary. And what will tend to happen is you will call an angel or a guide will come in. But call rhino in and allow rhino to talk to you and, and guide you on how to be more grounded and stable and focused and powerful on what's really important. Like a big tree. And that's why, you know, cedar wood is a really nice oil to work with as well. Big, strong tree. The other animal guide you may feel more alignment with is bison, the American bison. The Native Americans had, you know, the, really revered the bison. It was a really sacred thing. Now, bison being a migratory animal, yes, it's heavy and it's well grounded, but it, it has that deep relationship with the earth. Any migratory animal needs to know the earth very intimately and work with her energy and her flow. And so by tuning into bison, you can really connect as well and feel a bit more grounded in that type of way. Um, would you ever use, um, okay, Hannah just asked, would we, uh, would I use the essential oils right on the chakras? Yes, 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 <laughs> yes, <laughs> how many times can I say yes? Um, what, with a word of warning though, some essential oils, and if you become a doTERRA member with me, I actually guide you through um, which oils need dilution and which ones don't. But yes, you want to dilute it in a carry oil, um, especially things like um, cinnamon. It's going to be, you don't want to be put that in your base chakra, it'll be really spicy. And <laughs> yeah, it'll definitely wake it up. Um, so then you can put it on there. Now, if you're working with someone or you don't feel comfortable putting it on the base chakra, then you know, putting it nearby, massaging into the legs would be really good. Putting it on the feet or the hands could just be as effective as well. So any of those oils will be really good and I'm going to give you my blend at the very, very end. So. Basically what I've been giving you tonight is we've been looking at our base chakra. As I said at the start, we don't have, chakras don't just open and close because that is not how energy works. Energy ebbs and flows and so it can be either be overactive and have too much energy and we need to soothe that with some of the crystals we talked about. Or there's not enough energy and we need to draw some more energy in and I talked about crystals and oils for that. Or if it's nice and balanced, we can really start to super balance that and take that to a deeper and higher level. So. Are you ready for my essential oil blend? So what I like to do is I like to mix three parts cedarwood, two parts vetiver, and one part cinnamon. And I'm gonna have a graphic that I'm gonna put up afterwards, so if you can't remember that, then don't stress too much. But working with those three together and mix them together. Now, how can we mix them together? You can either put them in a diffuser, a few drops of that with water, or you can put them in a rollerball like this. This is just my basic base chakra one. And then what you can do, you can wear it on wrists and make it your cologne or your perfume. You can roll it on your feet. You can use it for healings, whatever you want to do. But this is going to be really, really powerful for this. So after this, I'm going to put some um, specials up in the event page and also in the comments below. And I'm going to let you know how you can get some of these oils, how you can get your tumbled rubies and different things like that. So hopefully that's given you um, a little bit of a greater understanding of the base chakra and, and different things you can do with that. As I said, on Wednesday or Thursday, we're going to announce the, the Crystal Healers um, course, where we'll actually be working through this and you'll be able to interact a lot more and ask questions. But before I wrap it up, if you're quick on the, quick on the keys, um, please feel free to type up any questions about the base chakra or any questions about that, or maybe what you got with your pendulum, and I can answer those. So I'm going to be doing this at the same time for all this week. So we're doing a chakra day, so obviously tomorrow will be the sacral chakra, and we'll move, it, move our way up all the way up to the crown chakra. If you remember, bring your pendulum each day because what I want to do is I want you to test your chakras as we're talking along so that what we're talking about is relevant. Now one final thing about the chakras, say like today we saw that my chakra was underactive in my base chakra. Is it always going to be underactive? No. So I might, at sometimes it might be overactive and I need to calm it down. So that's where coming into a pendulum and checking every so often can be really good as well. So I hope that gave you some really constructive and useful things on what you can do with your base chakra. And maybe you've got some of the red crystals that I talked about today. Get them out, play with them, put them on the base chakra, keep them in your pockets when you're not doing your healing and laying grids and all that type of thing. And really work with the essential oils as well, incorporate them however you can. One of the other great things about doTERRA essential oils is they're pure therapeutic great essential oils. They're some of the most divine, I can't speak high, I could do a whole webinar for five hours just on how much I love them. But you can actually ingest a lot of them 
And so this kind of opens up the possibilities of getting that powerful energy in. And so when we put out crystal energy that helps us shift and move energies with the essential oils that actually make changes in our physical body, when they work together, you'll find the chakra will really easily find balance in that way. So thank you so much for joining me on this first of the seven chakras in seven days. I'll see you at exactly the same same time tomorrow. If you'd like to become a doTERRA member, then I'm going to have information for that in the comments and on the event page as well. So thank you very much for joining me. I'm Adam Barillet. Blessed be.